What's up, y'all? We are back. This is episode 26, maybe? 25 or 26? I should have looked before I started recording, but too late now. Um, of the Out of the Park Baseball 24 series uh, with the Colorado Rockies. Apologize in advance. I have been dealing with the most painful throat. I, I thought it was strep. It's not. I don't know what it is. Um, but I finally feel a little bit better this week, and that's why I haven't put out any videos. Uh, I have my apple cider vinegar here. I'll be taking shots throughout this recording to get through it, but um, yeah, it's like an 8 out of 10 whenever I talk, so I'm going to try to power through this, get an episode out, and uh, yeah, apologize for that. Um, also, some other housekeeping. Just hit 100 subscribers, um, so thank you for all the subscribers and everyone who doesn't subscribe that watches anyway. Um, it's awesome. Love it. Um, yeah, I'll be putting out a, like, a out of the park baseball, like full review of the game. Uh, now that it's like final, like not final, but you know, like the last big patch just came out a while back and, um, you know, I just want to have like a wish list, like things that I didn't like about the game, things that I liked. Uh, some improvements that could be made. So I'll be putting that out uh, as like a 100 subscribers special or something. I don't know. <laughs> These what people do. So, uh, so yeah, that, that'll be coming out shortly uh, once I feel better and I have some time to record. Um, and a new series will be dropping as well pretty soon. Uh, I mean, the Rockies, we're going to keep going for a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't want this to become stale and, uh, you know, we'll basically keep beating this into the ground. So we're going to keep going along with this, but new series will be coming out. I put a lot of time into setting up the league. Um, it'll be an expansion team. Uh, I don't want to give too much else away, but yeah, it should be a fun one. Uh, you know, I we put a ton of effort in, went into the ballpark generator, created a bunch of stuff. It was fun, but <laughs> uh, yeah, but it took a couple hours to do. So uh, hopefully that'll be exciting, but uh, let's, let's work on the Rockies team right now. So it's been about a week since I jumped into the game, but um, let's start right here. Ford Thompson, torn labrum in his shoulder. This happened about like, a week or two ago. Uh, yeah, he'll be out for the year. Our only reliable start at this point in the season is out for the year. So we're going to somehow have to piece together our rotation with whatever this is. Uh, Gabriel Hughes, who we got in the off season is like a long man. He's now in our rotation, unfortunately. Alex Philpott's really been not great. Uh, you know, these guys haven't been terrible. Like, Christian Little's been bad, but he's been getting better. Um, Chris Wood's probably been our best starter, but even he's, like, a league average dude. And then Jaime Cooper's been disappointing. I mean, it's still early in his career, and he's been better recently, but... But, yeah, it hasn't been great for him. Uh, and the bullpen hasn't been fantastic either. Chevilly's fallen off a cliff this season. I mean, this is what happens with the relievers. Like, um, you know, the home run rate in 29 innings is really high. So if that goes down, he'll regress to the mean, but um, I guess the bullpen's been good besides him. Uh, Rodriguez hasn't been quite as good as he was last year, which was always going to be difficult to do, but um, yeah, the rest of the guys have been good. Munoz, uh, Doval, Rodriguez, Ochoa, Vesia. Um, that's all been pretty good. So uh, no real complaints of the bullpen besides the Chevilly thing. Uh, as for hitting, Zach Veen went down with another injury uh, early in the year. Strain back wasn't a huge thing, but it was enough to keep him out for a couple of weeks. Uh, but he's been awesome when he's out there, as he's always been. Uh, you know, he missed some time last year, but he was awesome once again. Uh, so hopefully he can stay healthy for the rest of the year. I have my doubts about that. Uh, it feels like the injuries have started to kind of rack up for him last couple of years. Um, I guess he, he was very healthy throughout his first, like, six years in the league. So maybe I'm uh, selling him short on his durability. But uh, Wolkow, he's been awesome. <laughs> Another really good season from him after breaking out last year. Really excited what he's going to bring. Uh, a move to first base could be imminent. Uh, I'm not sure how he's doing defensively. Yeah, he's doing pretty bad. But uh, he's fine there for now. I have kind of a plan moving forward with this team in the next year. Uh, Churio's been great, uh, you know, really consistent. Last two years, or I guess the last three years, he's been awesome. Uh, after, you know, not a bad year, but 
Uh, definitely a down 2029 by his standards. But yeah, he's on like a Hall of Fame trajectory low key here. So it'll be interesting to see how his career finishes out. Uh, Connor Griffin, our first baseman. He's been really good, albeit not as good as he was last year. But that was always going to be tough. His walk rate is impressively high. Uh, I don't know if that's sustainable, but um, yeah, really excited for what he's brought. Daniel Covet in a part-time role, um, although that is increasing as we'll get down to one of our underperforming players. Uh, he's been really good in this, like, you know, bench piece, lefty platoon guy. Um, on the other end of that, we'll just go down to Brian Betancourt. He's been abysmally bad. Negative 0.6 war, uh, 46 WRC+. Plus. I'm not completely pulling him out of the, the lineup, but... Um, you know, he's lost a lot of playing time against righties. Like, Covet's playing every third, Frankfurt every fifth. Uh, and he's not playing against lefties, obviously. So, I'm um, really disappointed out of him. Hopefully, he can turn it around. But, you know, we have guys that can come in. So, I'm not going to give him the longest of leashes here uh, to figure it out. Um, Casey Cunningham, like, a good season. But, you know, it just sucks that he lost last year uh, to the ACL. Or I, th I think it was, a, it was a knee injury. You know, he lost a little bit of speed. Uh, he's a crown ball hitter, so it's kind of important for him um, to inflate that BABIP, you know. He, he was at 419 last year. You know, that was never going to hold, but, um, you know, he's right back around, like, his career average of, like, 350-ish. Um, but, yeah, he's still been good. Like, he's been an awesome leadoff hitter for us. He can't complain too much. Uh, Joe Cut in his first year. As our starting catcher, he's been pretty solid. You know, no power at all, but <laughs> uh, overall, he's been a good bat. The defense hasn't been horrible, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll take what we can get there. Miguel Blyce, uh, a bit disappointing after, like, a huge, like, comeback year last year. Uh, after a disappointing 2030. Um, he has won, I guess, next year is his last year of control, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Let me go look. Yeah, next year is his last year of control. So, um, my plan might be to deal him if he has some value. I mean, I don't want to deal him, but uh, we have a ton of outfield and infield depth, and I think we get cheaper at that position. So, um, we'll see what happens with him. I really like him as a player, but, you know, the injuries have caught up to him, and, you know, his ability has kind of dropped. Um, you know, he's a solid three and a half war player, three war player, but he's not like a superstar, unreplaceable guy at this point. Um, Vessi's been a good backup catcher. No complaints about him. Wyatt Langford's been pretty good in the outfield. Not as good as he was last year, but, um, he's been good in, like, an outfield, playing against lefties quite often type of guy. Alex Mooney's been good. The bat not living up to the last two years, but overall has been a solid player. So, um, yeah, we're June 1st, 36-21. Um... As for the minor leagues, pretty excited about a couple of guys. Greg Melvin has developed awesome uh, 70 contact at this point at the age 21. Uh, just called him up to AAA, so he hasn't got any time there. Arminio Toto, another guy uh, excited about. He's in AAA, but not hitting great right now. Um, you know, he, he's probably just bored at this level, so I just got to give him a call up, which is one of the reasons I want to, you know, look into dealing Blyce here, but... Uh, that'll that'll come as we uh, as we move forward. Jeff Word just called him up to AAA. Um, you know he hasn't gotten much time in the minors, but he's just crushed at every level. So um, another guy who I want to get. You know he's probably my third baseman in the future. He's a little bit better defensively than Wolkow. So um, and you know he's got the great speed and the incredible like I want to see how this plays in cores batting profile. So. Um, Excited for him. He'll be up to some point this season, I think. Uh, same with Jeanette here, who could be my second baseman moving forward um, with Mooney, a pending free agent. He just got called up to AAA. Uh, hasn't had a ton of at-bats in the minors, just like word, but, you know, he's ready. So, um, so yeah, excited about him. Guadalupe Cordero is another guy I want to get up here. You know, he hit really well last year. Um, and I want to get him back in the majors. So basically it's, it's unclogging this log jam to cheapen us up a little bit for, for making future moves. So, um, you know, we're going to keep lice around for at least until the trade deadline, probably the season, but there are some moves pending here. So 
we're gonna hop back uh into simulation we'll be back at the next move here all right we are back first year player draft time uh checking in with the team we're 57 and 37 not the best month of uh june ever went 15 and 12 so far in july we're six and four so uh keeping a decent pace but not like anything crazy right now uh one of the big stories of the last month has been christian little uh, you know he got off to a really bad start to the year like you know giving up multiple runs um but he went on this stretch from like beginning of june where like he wasn't giving up any runs pitching deep into games uh, and he's kind of emerged as our ace here uh, shockingly enough, but, you know, we're really happy with what we've gotten from him. Um, we just called this dude Peter Hubeck. I got him off the street. Um, made five, star five starts down in double A. Um, you know, that doesn't really mean much. He got cut by San Francisco earlier this year. Uh, we need a guy to basically fill a body in the rotation for the time being. Uh, we had Chase Bentley up. Uh, he was actually, like, fine in five games. You know, most of them were really bad. But, like, he just had a really nice game against San Francisco. So, uh, he was adequate enough as, like, a villain for a couple starts. But, yeah, we're going to have to figure out something with that spot because, you know, Phil Cates not quite ready, although he's the next guy up, I'd, I'd guess. But, you know, I'm, I'm not really comfortable with him pitching right now in, a, in the majors. Uh, we had a couple injuries here. Randy Rodriguez went out for a couple weeks uh, with shoulder inflammation. Not great. Uh, you know, you never like to see the shoulder, but that was five to six weeks. Uh, he'll be back in about a week. So, uh, yeah, he went down right when, like, I cut out last time. Uh, VC went out uh, with a fractured finger. I Actually, yeah, it was seven weeks. He's almost back. Um so we called up in the meantime Brooks Wright, who's been uh he's been fine. <laughs> you know, he's a backup catcher who plays once every five games, six games. Um and then Alex Mooney went out for five weeks. Uh that was about a week ago. Um I guess it was five to six weeks, went out about a week ago. Uh yeah, he was having a nice year, but uh we have some guys we can plug in. Uh right now I'm rolling with uh, Guadalupe Cordero is my second baseman, you know, not the ideal second base ratings of the low double play, but, um, I really wanted to give his bat a shot and this was about as good a time as any because our infield depth is absolutely stacked at the upper minors. So, um, so yeah, we wound up calling him up. Uh, I just want to really quickly spotlight this one game that Wolkow had. <laughs> he had a three home run, nine RBI game way back in, uh, in June, so that was just a fun little um, game that I wanted to point out from him. Uh, another one that I noticed was Connor Griffin. I mean, this isn't the most impressive stat line, but I thought it was pretty cool. He had, a, in this 9-4 to win, he had one hit, uh, one home run, and six RBIs, so he had six RBIs on one hit. He had a sack fly and maybe like a ground out or something, um, but I, I've never seen someone have six RBIs with just one hit, so uh, pretty cool. Um, Trey Snyder's up with the team right now. He's like a defensive replacement for Cordero over at second and then playing every fourth there. Uh, and he's been pretty good since he got called up. Um, besides that, nothing really to report. Kind of business as usual with the team. Cunningham's hitting better. Uh, Blaise is hitting better. Uh, Chilcutt's hitting worse, but that's fine. And then Betancourt, I don't really know what to do with him at this point. I don't want to take him out of the lineup because, you know, sentimentality, but... Um, yeah, it, it'd be, like, really weird to be benching a guy with a career 120 w, or, uh, WRC+, plus, but, I mean, it's kind of reaching that point. Um, you know, Covet's been really good when he's been out there. I'm giving him every third game here against righties, and then, you know, he's playing every day against lefties, but, and Langford's playing a bunch, too. Um, so, like, he's not really the starter right now. He's kind of, like, in a, like, timeshare with these guys, <laughs> but... Uh, it's not, I wouldn't even call it a platoon because, like, he's not playing against righties every day. So, uh, it's more of a timeshare at this point with all those guys. But, you know, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, at least give him the season. And uh, maybe he figures it out. Maybe he doesn't. Um, you know, he wants 4.4 in arbitration. It's not going to happen at this point. But, um, you know, crazier things have happened, I guess. So, um, we managed to un unclog our upper minors just a bit. 
Uh, it was a really small transaction, not even worth cutting in for. Um, that is not the screen I wanted to go to. So this was back in June. Uh, it was a minor trade. So uh, JD Hawley, who was, let's see. Yeah, he, so we got him along with AJ Minter, Joe Wallace, uh, way back in 2028 for a bunch of guys who probably never did anything, I'd imagine. A bunch of these guys actually retired. Derek Mitchell retired. That's crazy. Um, yeah, we got him uh, in that trade. You know, he, he was up a little bit last year. Uh, has been hitting in the minors just fine, but, you know, this player is just redundant with a lot of guys we have in our for minors. Um, along with this other guy that, that we had, Jonathan Blevins, who is just a worse version, worse defensively, worse offensively. Surprisingly, it was hitting uh, really well in AAA. Well, that's not really surprising because, you know, he's a good bat. But um, we had drafted him in the second round, I believe. Yeah, second round back in 2027. Uh, he's 27 now. Like, uh, I would like to see him get a shot somewhere. So I shipped them both off for basically this flyer of a pitcher, Jeff Albin, 24 years old, almost 25. Uh, you know, decent upside, but he's 24, so probably never going to get that control. Uh, probably just minor league depth, but, you know, these guys are useful to have in the system. Uh, looks like he's had an interesting story, actually. Looks like he started at Indie Ball, didn't play for a couple of years. Um, maybe some DCR in here? Or TCR, not DCR. <laughs> but, okay, let's hop into the draft. I haven't looked at this at all. We have the 37th pick. Holy crap. Uh, that is just absurd. Uh, looks like the Blue Jays and the Rays, neither of them signed their first round pick last year. So they'll be sitting at the top of the draft. Miami has a comp pick as well at 15. Oakland at 24. Uh, so that's four picks right there. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So let's see. Oh, I, see, I wish I was spending, picking at the top of the drafts at this point in the save because... Yeah, these guys are just sick. Uh, the, the the talent that is generated late in these, like, saves, this isn't particularly late, but, you know, a couple of years in, like, these guys are, like, insane. So, um, these are actually only batters, too. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> we'll go ahead. Let's see who Pittsburgh takes number one. Sam Kearns, I uh, can't disagree with that. You know, corner guy, so he's limited in what he can do, but... Uh, yeah, this thing I would have taken is Sean Hawk. Uh, just about as good offensively, but can play a good corner, some center field if you need him to. Yeah, Turnier Bowers. Yeah, this guy's just a souped up version of the first guy <laughs> who can actually play a good corner. Uh, not a good leader, but a guy I would definitely take uh, early in this draft. Uh, yeah, so a lot of good draft picks early in the, early in the draft here, so. I already see Dave Egan here, who I was interested in as like a top guy in this draft. Uh, not a good defender. Lefty. Um, lefty right doesn't really matter too much. We have a good balance in our lineup at the moment. Um, and I normally wouldn't be concerned about lefty righty with prospects, but you know, this guy's like almost like major league ready, so uh, one of those things to actually like kind of look out for. Jelani Ritchie, uh, third base prospect, not even a third baseman, really. Uh, corner outfielder, first base type, low work ethic, low leader. Jeremy White, honestly really intrigued by that bat. And I don't even care if he can't play first base, but that, that bonus demand, never mind. Uh, nine mil is a bit much. Oh, this is the sixth pick. I thought I drafted to my pick. Okay, yeah, so this is this is a little bit better. That was embarrassing. Um, honestly, wouldn't be opposed to going with a high school guy, although I don't know how long I'm doing the save for, and these guys probably won't be up anytime soon, I'd imagine. Especially with my track record for how long these guys take to reach the, reach the majors. Um, you know, it could be a while. Uh, Ian Jackson, good work ethic. Nice defender. Uh, this is all batters as well. I would like to grab some high upside pitchers here because we, we could really use that in the system. Uh, this guy is three fastballs and a circle change that might not develop. No thank you. 
Josh Sargent, a lot more interesting. Really good pitch mix here. Fastball slider, sinker, and knuckle curve, changeup potentially. You know, not completely zeroed out for a 17-year-old um, with his current rating, so that's also good. You know, these guys are so, so hit or miss. Like, Danny Biss, like, that control terrifies me. <laughs> Gasati is a really nice... Oh, this guy's a really nice player. I feel like we already have so much, like, outfield in the upper minors, though. Like, what... We really need pitching. Like, that's that's kind of essential. Like, we have Toto here, who's just rotting down here in AAA at the, point, at the moment. Greg Melvin, who needs to get up. Uh, Joe Shaka, who would be on any major league roster, probably in the league. Uh, and he's our third guy, honestly, in the chopping block. Yeah, I mean, we have so much upper minors outfield depth that uh, I would be comfortable rolling the dice with a couple of pitchers here. So... <laughs> I mean, how is our lower minors look for, for pitching? So, we have Josh Patton, and he took in the sixth round last year. I mean, we haven't really used a ton of resources. Josh Dahlman's a guy I like, but, you know, another guy who we've been waiting on him for a couple of years now. You know, he's been in, the, in rookie ball for three seasons. Four seasons, really. Um, he's 20 years old. So, um... All right, let's go to all pitchers. Let's see what we have for college arms. Carrasco is a really nice high floor guy. Pretty decent two-way potential as well. And <laughs> he's a good outfielder. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, probably not the... Doesn't have high enough upside to go here in the first round. Chris Flood, fastball sinker guy. This is fascinating. <laughs> um... Zifang Liu, 22-year-old out of China. Or I guess he's Chinese. I don't know if he's from China, but... Looks like he's not from China. Um, wow, see, I don't know what to make of this pitch mix. He already has a good changeup. Fastball sinker, so he really is a two-pitch guy. I don't know if he sticks as a starter, though. I don't, know if they, I don't think he's going to strike anyone out with that pitch mix with the low stuff. I, I would love to keep an eye on his career though, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shortlist him because that would be interesting. Uh, let's see where he goes. Wildpool, a good floor guy. Pat Wolf, uh, Chris Zanis. I'm very intrigued actually by this guy. Although he's got the three pitch thing too. Never mind. Um, Bobby Diamo. See, I could really use some guys who can help right now. Delane might be the guy here. Um, I work at that guy, Intelligence, 21 years old. Could pitch in the majors right now. Awesome pitch mix. Right now, Delane's at the top of my list for, for guys to look at here. Kevin Underwood, a close second, though. Uh, he's got that wipeout slider. Fastball sinker changeup kind of developed. Although, they always say I didn't think so. Let's see. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think right now the pick is. Um, oh my god, I already forgot his name. Delane. Delane. Okay, Delane. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's got the cutter. He only has one fastball, only a cutter. And then splitter, I guess. Pseudo fastball, knuckle curve, curveball, slider, changeup. That's like five out pitches there. He could be a really good pitcher, I think. Um, this is worth giving a look to these uh, these high school guys. Yeah, I mean, Sargent's a good good arm, but you know, I can't be waiting all like forever for these guys to come up. Yeah, there's really no one that like Bob Saunders is okay. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we have our first round pick here. So, yeah, Del Delane will come in, and you know I'm I'm gonna put him right into Double A. I think. God, I already lost him. There you are, Jabari Delane. Incredibly high floor for a 21 year old. Uh, wants a pretty big bonus. We can afford it, but uh, that's gonna use up like all of our our money right now. So. 
I think it's still very much worth it. Uh, Liu's still here. I, I might give him a flyer. I mean, he's a righty. Not going to strike anyone out. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. This is a supplemental pick, so kind of a free pick. Uh, if you want to think of it that way. I don't even remember who the signing was. Um, we like to be loose in the offseason. Probably Drew Romo. <laughs> if we don't have two, I th we might have two. Yeah, we do. We have back-to-back -back picks here, actually. So, uh, it was Romo and uh, probably McClanahan. I don't know. I haven't you know, looked at this game in a while. That sounds right, though. So, Chase President? 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 Interesting. Uh, Marquise Honeywood. Okay, so I'm going to go off camera and look through some of these guys and try to come up with a good pick here. So we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we'll get to the draft picks in just a second, but we have a, uh, a pretty big trade here to announce. So <sighs> Miguel Blyce, you know, I love him. <laughs> we got him a long time ago for, I mean, this is kind of a, this is a bit of a cheesy trade at the time, but we uh we traded Logan Webb. He was having a horrible season at the time uh, to Houston um, for Miguel Blyce at the uh, and at the time you know he was a pretty good prospect, but slowly evolved into like an MVP type player. We also gave up Brock Selvage apparently, um, or got him, but um yeah he had one of the best seasons I've seen from a player at age twenty four. Um, but unfortunately injuries hit him the next season and he really hasn't been the same player since, um, he lost a lot of defensive ability and, you know, he's a good right fielder, but these guys are unfortunately really replaceable. So, you know, he's had an awesome career here in Colorado and he'll probably continue to be a really good player, but, uh, we're looking to get cheaper at the position. We have guys who I want to get out in the outfield and get, basically get some more playing time for cheap. So, um, that's going to push Connor Griffin, I think, into the outfield, which is probably where he should be playing. He's just playing first base kind of by, you know, by nature of what's happened with the how the roster has been constructed over the years. So, um, so we're giving up Miguel Blyce. Um, You know, I don't want to give him up, but, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of in money trouble. I put too much in development this offseason. <laughs> well, let me say, yeah, I have $45 million. I probably shouldn't have put that much, but... Um, yeah, I, I, that was stupid. But, yeah, we need some money to sign our draft picks. Um, also going to go with Coy James, who I really like as a player, but, you know, probably a little overvalued by the AI, I'd say. Um, you know, he is a really good player, don't get me wrong. He'll probably have a good career, but um, this guy, he's kind of redundant with what we have, and he's not a good defender. Um, well, he's a good defender, but he's not versatile enough to be able to kind of make my super utility guy, so... Um, he'll, he'll be shipped out as well as Jeff Albin, <clears throat> who we just got, uh, if you remember <clears throat> from Washington, uh, made seven starts for me before now being traded. So, um, so yeah, we turned him into basically a dart throw, Sergio Montalvo, um, you know, 16 year old with pretty decent current ratings, uh, high leader, high work ethic, high loyalty for whatever that matters. Um. You know, this is a dart throw, 16 years old. We're also getting $6 million cash, which is kind of the big part. So um, this will give us enough to, I mean, we have most of our draftees. They'll be fine, but uh, I do want to get these guys signed. And this will give us just enough, I think, to get that done. So uh, we could also open up, like, a little bit more money. Um, like, we only get $6.3 million. This Philly Weaver guy is disgusting, by the way. Um yeah, so they're cool with this. I would like to get a little bit more money, but that that's fine. Um, yeah, it sucks to you at Blyce, but it just it's it's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, uh, his ratings have dropped over the years, and the injuries have caught up to him. So yeah, I didn't expect our fans to love that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So uh, that's a sad day for the team. Um, but we'll go through the draft picks really quick here. Good. We have enough money, I believe. Perfect. So, 
the draft, uh, I think it went pretty well, all things considered. So, uh, we took Delane first round. Love that pick. Uh, would do that again. Dan Bond we took here in the second round. Uh, more of a high ceiling, low floor guy. High school arm. Uh, I like him a bit, so we'll see if he develops one day. Uh, with the next pick in the draft, uh, the 41st pick, we took this guy, Ian Jackson. Really high upside. Uh, I don't take a lot of these guys anymore, so I thought this would be fun. Uh, you know, a rangy, speedy outfielder with some good hitting ability. Uh, I think it's a fun player. So uh, we take him. Then we wound up taking Alfredo Carrasco, who I was kind of looking at in the first round. Uh, we get him here in the second round, 77th overall. Love this pick. Uh, two-way potential. You know, not the best hitter, but uh, I'll start him out as a two-way guy. Uh, he's a really good defender out in the outfield, too. And a uh, pretty good arm. So we'll see if he develops into anything. We took Nate Adorno here in the third round, 110th overall. Like his pitch mix, you know, high school arm. These guys tend to bust, but uh, occasionally you'll hit on him, so. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, high school bat. We took him in the fourth round. Not much defensive ability, but a good bat. Uh, Steve Lay we took. Third base, corner, infield, outfield type. Uh, decent bat. Fifth round pick, you know. Throwing darts at this point. Uh, ben Ruxer, liked the bat. OSA loved him uh, with his offense, so gave him a flyer. AJ Wallach, uh, pretty decent bat potential. He's got some good personality. Uh, Danny Carpino, decent catcher, not a bad bat. Uh, Mike Neal, like the pitch mix. Um, and yeah, we'll see with that. But yeah, that's pretty much the last pick. Uh, this guy's a relief pitcher prospect. Um, some dart throws at pitcher. John Carey's an interesting pitcher. Um, and yeah, so there, there's the draft. Um, All-star teams will be announced in a couple days. I should need to... Um, so with that trade of Blyce, that opens up a roster spot. Um, you know, Chica might have the inside track. He's hit really well down in AAA. He's older, which, you know, I'd like to give these guys a shot. Tim Mariner's been really good. Uh, I can pretty much call up whatever position. I think it'll probably be Toto here, though. Um, he's already 24. I want to get him up here uh, and playing, so... Uh, so how this is going to work, I think, actually, Griffin might stick at first for now uh, with Toto here. So Toto, not the best arm. I'd much rather have Veen out in right field, I think. So we're going to shift Toto to left field. Veen to right. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, run with that line up there, I think. And then um, – Toto will slot in here as well. Move down to the lineup. Maybe we'll bat him last, actually. Um, then I do want to get Langford some time out there in the outfield. So we'll play him every fifth. Every fifth. I uh, don't need a defensive replacement anymore. Or I guess Langford could be the right field defensive replacement now. So, boom. There's our lineup. Uh, so Toto slots right in as our left fielder for now. Could be our center fielder moving forward, but, you know, Cheerio's still holding it down. Good defender out there, so. Uh, yeah, we'll go here to the All-Star game. We'll see if Toto can get a hit his first game. And looks like they didn't even play him, so. Uh, yeah, Langford got the start there. So, okay. Cooper has a really good start, so let's check the All-Star teams. Uh, okay, so, Shane Boz, that sucks. I almost traded for him. I know I mentioned that every episode, but probably should have done that in hindsight. He just made a ton of money. Uh, there's the AL All-Stars. Anyone having a ridiculous season? Uh, Jeremy Swift is a 5 war year so far. Pretty impressive. Uh, looks like the biggest standout of any AL player here, so... As we shift to the NL, look out for any Colorado guys... Uh, Bubba Chandler, who I really want, but unfortunate. Uh, Sevelin, our former pitcher, uh, making the all-star team. Not surprising. Um, yeah, that was the Mooney trade. I think that worked out well for both teams. Uh, we also got some decent arms and, uh, and Chris Bednick, too. So 
Uh, not the worst trade in the world, but, you know, he's now a multiple time. Or, this is his first all-star team, but, you know, a really good pitcher here. Uh, Munoz makes the all-star team. Randy Rodriguez as well. Although, I don't know, he's having a good year, but not nearly as good as he's been. In the infield, Cunningham makes his second all-star team in as many years. He's really turned it on recently. Up to a 120 WRC plus player. Wolkow makes his first all-star team. Hopefully first of many. 26 years old. Finally starting to turn it on here. Uh, love what we're getting from him. And let's see. Connor Griffin makes it in left field. I guess technically he's a first baseman. But um, whatever. Zach Veen makes it despite playing just 65 games. Love that. And then Jackson Churio uh, makes the all-star team in center field. He'll be starting. Um, and Connor Griffin will also start. Looks like he'll start in left field, although... No, he'll start at first. Yeah. I should probably just change his position. I mean, he's been playing first base for, like, the last three seasons, so... Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll sum to the deadline here, uh, see if we got any moves to make, and, and come right back. Okay, so this isn't the flashiest of moves here for the deadline, but we need another starter, and pitching's really expensive, so... Uh, this is the best I could really swing. Nip Bisco, uh, pretty decent arm here. Uh, like it quite a bit, you know. High movement, decent stuff. Um, doesn't strike out a ton of guys, but can eat innings for us. Um, is he gonna get a playoff start? Probably not, but uh, he's got a couple years of control. I think it's a good deal because uh, we're not giving up much. I mean, Tim Mariner, I really like. He's a former ninth round pick. Uh, actually, had a couple games up in the majors for me recently. Um, deal with a few injuries, but he's crushed triple A. Um, I'd love to see him get a shot somewhere. He's a prankster, which is really cool. Uh, but he's 25, almost 26. I'm sh I'm ready to give him an opportunity somewhere else. Uh, and Mike Flora, 24 year old, former 18th round pick, really good defender can play all over the field. Uh, quite a good outfielder too. Um, uh, but the bat's really not there and, uh, you know, he's getting older. So, um, I was trying to get them to retain some salary just so we wind up in the positive but it's not going to happen here so uh, so yeah we'll complete this trade and you know hubeck's been pretty good for us in a couple starts um but you know it's it's better to i don't know see he's out of options so um maybe we'll uh we'll wait with bisco to add him to the roster until you know there's a more obvious move to make uh you know anything could happen within seven days so um Couple of couple of things to announce because that'll probably be the only move of the deadline here. Uh, we did call up Devon Jeanette, who we drafted in the third round just last season. Uh, he was just crushing at every level. Uh, he's come up twelve percent walk rate and twenty five at bats. You know, small sample, but uh, it's not nothing. So, um, other things. Brad Betancourt had like a four day injury. I kind of gave him a little phantom IL thing. Um, but it turned out we need him more than I thought we did because our offense was really bad for a couple of games. Uh, or at least we were losing a bunch of games, I should say. So get Betancourt back in there. Um, you know, we'll see if he makes it at the end of the year. I would assume he would, but um, but yeah, he's been pretty disappointing. Going to start losing playing time if he doesn't pick it up. But um, let's see, Trey Snyder's played really well. Um, in part-time duty, you know, spelling Jeanette once in a while. Against lefties, we're playing Cordero at second again. I mean, it's we could play Jeanette there, but I'd rather go with Cordero against the lefties. Um, he's quite a bit better, um, at least contact-wise, against them. You know, that, that allows us to play some of our, our righties against them and then lefties against uh, righties. So, um, as for the rotation, Christian Little continues to be awesome. Uh, we needed him big time. Phil Potts kind of struggled here. I'm going to start dropping his, um, I'm going to make him like once through the order type of guy. You know, I'll give him 21 batters. Uh, Jaime Cooper has been much better recently. Take away this one game. He's been really good and consistent for us. Uh, Chris Wood, you know, a really solid four starter. Uh, I'm not going to have any complaints about him really. And then Hubeck, we kind of talked about. Randy Rodriguez, finally back. Uh, it's throwing a couple games. If all goes bad and we need another starter, Rodriguez is the guy. So, um, you know, he hasn't started in a couple of years, but 
I'm definitely comfortable giving him like a uh, twice through the order type of thing if we need it. Uh, then Munoz Duvall have been really good in the back end. Uh, honestly, Rodriguez Ochoa, Vesia have been awesome as well. Uh, she really has been a little bit better. The home run rate starting to dip and, you know, the results are coming. But, uh, yeah, he's now functioning as an opener for uh, Hubeck. Um, at least until, you know, the, the roster thing gets figured out. And then uh, Gabriel Hughes has been good in long, long relief. No, he was just brutal as a starter in a couple of games, but as a reliever, he's been uh, he's been quite good. So you know, you take away these four starts I gave him, and he's been uh, he's been good. So you know, kind of like it's kind of turned into like a, a bulk thing with like Hughes coming in for a couple innings after Ubeck gives me a start. It, it's kind of worked out uh, just fine. So um, you know, we didn't need us we didn't need Bisco here, but I think it's good to have five guys who can give you four or five innings so um yeah that'll wrap up the episode uh or armenio toto uh, he played two games for me hit two home runs five rubies he was awesome <laughs> but after the two games he had a high ankle sprain i think it was like a yeah four week injury um so he's out when he'll be back in a couple weeks so that'll be good to have that glove back in um although jeanette's been really good so we're like we're in good shape here um you know does trade away Blyce hurt our team right now? Definitely. But um, I think long-term, it's a good decision. He's actually played pretty poorly for Detroit so far. Um, I expect him to, to be better for him for them. But, uh, yeah, that'll wrap up the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.